Review it again. A 10 out of 10. Review it again. It's a 10 out of 10. Review it again. Hi, everyone. Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. And it's time for a review. Let's, let's end off this week with a good review. Let's end off this week with a good review of the new Destroyer record, Poison Season. I actually want to put this up there. Destroyer is the singer-songwriter project of singer-songwriter guy, Dan Behar. He's from Vancouver. I love his voice. I love the man's poetry. He's been dropping records under this name since the 90s. And you might also recall him from other musical projects and bands, such as Swan Lake and The New Pornographers. But I mostly enjoy his solo material. This Night, Street Hawk, as well as uh, Destroyer's Rubies a little bit. Um, also his 2011 album, Kaput, and Kaput was actually a huge crossover success for Dan, gained him listeners that he hadn't had before, and it was a bit of a stylistic change for him too. It wasn't simply this kind of very verbose poetry-based rock music, he was playing like a little bit of art pop, a little bit of refined Baroque pop on this thing, with a lot of reverb on it. It was very refined, it was very sensual, it was very easygoing, light on the ears, and catchy, while this kind of music instrumentally usually just kind of falls into the background for me. Dan's vocals and his poetic eccentricity made these songs come alive and kept them fun, kept them engaging. And putting out a record that is that successful, it can kind of be like starting all over again because you have all of these new listeners that you didn't have before, so the pressure can most definitely be there to come up with a good follow-up record. And it doesn't seem like Dan rushed into doing so because it's been like four years since the release of Kaput. And this record sounds like Dan took his time with it. It is lavish. Not only that, but it doesn't really have the old school vibe that Kaput had. It doesn't sound like it was either recorded in the 80s or is trying to recapture some older sound from years ago. It actually sounds very dry, very punchy, very modern, but in a way it kind of goes back to Dan Behar's usual poetry rock roots. On Poison Season, Dan is a lot more hushed and reserved, even on some of the, the louder moments here, which was a little off-putting at first when I was listening to this record, but ultimately it was fine and really enjoyable. It just kind of has a different appeal. It doesn't so much jump out at me as much as it just kind of draws me in. Then once you get to tracks like the opener on this album, you kind of have this really sad, quiet, string-kissed music with Dan delivering his poetry very quietly on top of it. He's not just putting out rock and pop songs on every track here. There are a lot of tracks here that kind of feel like uh, interludes, like theatrical detours. And even when he is quiet, uh, Dan still comes off very passionate and pretty eccentric too. And the poetry on this starting track actually resurfaces on a few other songs here. The centerpiece of the album Times Square, as well as the closer. Uh, I do like the poem on this track, however, I'm, I'm not really totally sure what the significance of it is to the entire album, because a lot of the poetry on this record is kind of esoteric, and even though I really enjoy it, uh, slowly I feel like I'm kind of putting the puzzle pieces together. However, I kind of have this feeling that I'm going to hit a wall doing that and, and not sort of gain a full understanding of this record because some of the imagery that Dan brings up on this record feels so surreal that it might not have some kind of clear translation or anything like that. It's just meant to be this very strange, evocative image. Jesus is beside himself. Jacob's in a state of decimation. And I like how the next track just jumps in with the heavy saxes and the pianos and the guitars. It's a really hard hitting, catchy, just a, a really melodic tune. Uh, feels a little Springsteen-ish in a way, you know, some E Street Band shit. Uh, however, it, it sounds really good, and I love the way the instrumentation comes together so intensely on the back end of the track. However, if, if there was one song where I wish Dan really 
picked it up vocally and just came a little harder, it's this song because he does tend to get drowned out in this instrumentation a little bit. Though still, I, I appreciate the, uh, the kick in the teeth right from the start on this record. And even though the louder tracks and the track listing here may be essential, may be fantastic, it's really the quieter songs that, that, that pull me in and get me a little <sighs> emotional. Uh, Dan does a fantastic job of bringing his oddball charm on these tracks. Like with the song Hell, which has these just very nice, refined, baroque string sections, and I love the ascending chord progression on this song too. Dan's poetry on this track is lovely, and it actually gets pretty frank toward the back end of the track when the instrumentation picks up a little bit and we get some percussion in the background and the instrumental is just romping, just dancing around in this uh, really fun way. And uh, Dan is just singing, it's hell down here, it's hell, it's hell down here, it's hell. The next track, The River, is just as luscious and overloaded with swagger, with a little extra schmaltz on the horn sections. And with the song Girl in a Sling, uh, not only is this one of the quieter tracks where Dan really pulls, pulls me, me in, but it's at this point on the record where I actually feel like I'm listening to what Dan imagines in his head to be like his own personal musical. Like the, the, the imagery on this song, what I sort of imagine in my head when I'm listening to this song is so strong. I feel like I'm looking at Dan on a stage dressed exactly like this, except maybe with like a, I don't know, like an old school like hat from the 50s or something like that and his suit has some holes in it and he's got stubble on his face and he's just like, I don't know, this this lovable tramp sort of character who's drunken and, and heartbroken and he's delivering this poetry in the middle of uh, an empty street at night, like at 2 a.m. and he's just like, singing up to the stars. And even though it's another quiet track, this song contrasts really well with the very sedate Archer on the Beach, which has a really slick bass line, very nocturnal groove, strange, just reverbed, echoed guitars, kind of coloring the space in this song, and some jazzy piano flourishes too, which sometimes get a little dissonant, a little sour to kind of make the tone of this very open track feel a little uneasy. I love how the song Midnight Meets the Rain picks up the pace of this record perfectly, and how we get a few more tracks that are a little more easy going right after. I like that Dan, even though a bulk of this record is sedate, he does a great job of making sure with some instrumental transitions in the midst of a song or just with some good peppy tracks placed here and there throughout the track list that there is never sort of like a long lull anywhere on this record. I think the biggest lull here is maybe Solace's Bride, which uh, I think in the grander scope of the record was a little redundant with its instrumentation, even if I do like the poetry on this track a little bit. However, I do love the song Bangkok right after. Not only does this track have one of the most serene intros of any song here, but it's actually got one of the best buildups too, and, and, and the second half, which is very peppy, uh, is actually fantastic. And uh, I love Dan's lyrics on, on this part of the song. Bring out your dead, bring out your live, what's got into Sunny? Again. Behar with that supreme level of charm and swagger. Even in the midst of such <laughs> obtuse lyrics, he seems like this infinitely interesting and captivating and strange guy. Passionate. And finishes off pretty well too, not only with a revisitation of that poem that Dan delivered at the start of this record, on the song Times Square, which uh, I, I forgot to mention, is actually an amazing song. The instrumentation on this track is great. I love how consistently we get great bass lines, horns, pianos, and some hand drums placed throughout here and there on this record too. I mean, the, the, the instrumentation on this record, uh, it, it doesn't vary too much, but it's so vibrant, it's so fun, it's so well mixed, and um, it's, it's very colorful, and there's some strong grooves on this thing too. Not like it's a, a record you want to play in a dance club or anything like that, but the way the instrumentation moves, it's so natural, it's so organic, beautiful, and fluid. But the song Sun in the Sky before the closing track here uh, actually has some pretty strong hand drums on it too. And uh, this is maybe the most sensual song on the record. Uh, the groove of it, Dan's romantic poetry on this track. It just makes me want to just really dance, just sway my shoulders, do a little bit of this. 
maybe do a little slow dance on this track with Bay. Overall, I loved this record. I thought it was great. Even though uh, it's not reinventing the wheel or anything like that, it's Dan Behar continuing to do what he does in a fantastic manner. And it's, it's also everything that I like about a great singer-songwriter record. It's well-written, the instrumentation is tasteful, and it actually melds with the guitars and the, just the, the pianos, the bass instrumentation really nicely. It's poetic, it's moving, it's intimate, and, and, and something that I think is specific to this record and kind of makes Dan unique is that when I'm listening to his music, I feel really close to him. You know, not like in a personal way, but I feel like I'm, 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 I'm in his head but the closer I get to him, the harder he is to read. You know, just the, the closer in you look, just the more blurry the image gets. But when I kind of step back and I'm looking at the this record with like a w wide shot, the image is gorgeous. Again, the pianos, the saxes, the hand drums, uh, they all sound great. And, um, you know, sure, it's a little theatrical, it's a little dramatic, it's, uh, it's anything but straightforward a lot of the time, but if you're patient and you love good instrumentation, you like some interesting poetry, and uh, you, you like your singer-songwriters to run a little eccentric, a little on the, the fringe, the poetic fringe, um, you know, there are moments here like, uh, uh, like Times Square again where I feel like a little bit Dan is channeling his, uh, his inner Lou Reed a little bit. If, uh, if that's the wild side you like to walk on, then I think you're going to find a lot uh, to like on this record. I'm feeling a decent strong eight on this thing. Tran. Zishin, have you given this record a listen? If you have, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? What do you think I should review next? And that's it. Anthony Fantano, Destroyer, forever.